the Radio Waymo Breakfast. Issues of the day under T Radar. He's joining us uh, fresh from the heat in Sydney, T Radar. Good day, dear. Well, hello from a uh, uh, sort of slightly cooler and still subtropical Auckland. Yeah, indeed. Um, and of course, we've had our own little mini heat wave down south um, as well. I mean, there's been, been the humidity up north, but they, uh, those crazy temperatures in the South Island over oh, the weekend, wow. Just ludicrous, you know, absolutely ludicrous. And, uh, you know, tomorrow we're getting up to 40 degrees, I think it was. We were in Sydney and it was, I think it, was, it must have been up to in the 42s to 45s. Yeah. And uh, just sweltering and just people just panting around, you know, gently sweating. But you always you have this, have this impression of Aussies that they're just used to that heat, that it would be like nothing. But no, 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 they weren't. You know, they were all sort of, um, particularly in Sydney, they were just going, oh, it's unbearable. There was brownouts. Um, you know, the air conditioning systems couldn't cope. Um, suburbs were sort of browning out because, well, it was too hot and everyone sort of wanted to be cool. Uh, I know a friend of mine, or the guys, one of the guys I was with, went down to the uh, dairy to get some bottled water, some mm. cool water. Um, because we were doing a bit of travelling around, and uh, the guy went, "Oh, my fridges couldn't handle it; they're both broken." Wow! So you know, it was it was quite astounding. And then, yet at the same time, that this kind of heat wave was striking Sydney. Of course, uh, Cyclone Yari was up in up in uh, the north, yes, dumping he, sort of uh, yes, immense amounts yes, of water on them. And over in Perth, there were mm. bushfires. Mm. Um, where, where else? What else? Oh, Adelaide, uh, Melbourne had flooding as well, which is sort of the tail end of the cyclone came down and whipped around over the bottom. We actually drove through a tiny part of it. We're on the train from um, from Adelaide go through Broken Hill, and uh, when we got there, they sort of you could see this incredible thunderstorm on the horizon, mm. and you sort of, we just sort of somehow managed to skirt it. But yeah, water, water everywhere. Yeah, and I guess the whole that whole situation the bushfires, the floods, the heat wave, it was all linked to the cy- cyclone, really, wasn't it? No, no, I think I don't think the bushfires are linked to that, but just. I think they were sort of a separate thing, uh, you know, of themselves. They'd been going on for quite a while, actually. They're quite quite burny over there in Western Australia. But the whole thing, you know, makes you think, what's the point of Australia? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's inhospitable beyond words. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we were supposed to be going over there. We had it all scheduled in to go and film a, you know, a whole lot of stuff about the drought. And it, it seems that whenever I go to Australia, uh, you know, and go into the outback, you're expecting all this kind of... You know, desert. But uh, both times I've gone through the outback, it's been in that that very small window of lushness. Everything's right. green. Yeah. You know, this sort of plants burst through for the the very short amount of time that they have a bit of moisture and propagate their little um, botanical pants off. Isn't it funny? It's uh, it's so close to us, and yet so it's, it could be worlds apart in in, in its um, environment. Oh, you know, once you get away from the coast and, and and you know into the inland, you know, we're broken hill and places like that. And this wonderful old woman who was sort of in her eighties and spent seventy eight of those 80, 80 years living in broken hill. She went, well, normally when you come here, it's dirt, dirt, and more dirt. Uh, yeah. It's a bit green today. Sorry about that. He went, yeah, no, don't apologise. So is anyone talking <laughs> climate change? Yes, yeah, there's a lot, of, quite a few people sort of talking that. Other, uh, there's a, was a lot of uh, discussion in the various newspapers, and one of the great things that, you know about Australia is just the, the number of newspapers you can go to the, the dairy and get the, the Sydney Morning Herald, the Age, the Australian, you know, mm. read them all up, which I, which I did. Um, so there was a lot of people going, well, it's, it's in fact what's happening is there are less cyclones. You know, the records don't go all that far back, but there was someone who plotted the cyclones and the destructive cyclones. Um, Going all the way back, and and in some ways, they while they some of them had increased in, in intensity, the number of them had dropped off. So you know, you're always getting all this sort of climate change arguments about it, but it, it does strike a lot of people that you know things aren't what they used to be. Yeah, it ain't what it used to be, T Radar. No, they're, no, they're not. No, we had a good interview. There's a, a young guy called Ben McNeil who wrote a book um, about the whole thing and saying, look, uh, you know what it is? It's a, it's a massive business opportunity, and people need to get their heads around it regardless of whether or not you're a sceptic, things are changing and you need to you need to get onto that bandwagon and, and have the green technology and whatnot. And, and he, mm-hmm. he's got a good argument in his book that, you know, um, in many ways, you know, here in New Zealand we go, oh, it's going to catch up to Australia, got to be like Australia, got to be, you know, oh, the lucky country, all those minerals. He goes, actually, you're leaps and bounds ahead of Australia, you know, with our, our renewable resources and various bits and pieces. And yeah. he says, you know, we're all based on this old technology of digging stuff up out of the ground and yeah. sending it away. Yeah. Fascinating guy. In fact, um, the uh, New Zealander of the Year, um, and and his name just skips me, but I'm about to find it while I'm talking to you about the New Zealander of the Year. He, um, it was a great quote from him over the weekend. He's a scientist, and um, and he's and uh, he also got the um, the Prime Minister's Science Prize last year as well. Right. So you'd think that John Key, having given him the the Science Prize, 
might, uh, you know, yeah, take some notice of what he's been saying. Like that, was it? No, 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 no. That's, that, that's his science advisor. Ah. Um, he said that um, that you know, uh, Sir Paul Callahan. Ah, yes. Um, he said that we should be supporting our um, technology and creative sectors rather than exploiting our natural resources. Well, you know, there are, that is the future. And um, yeah, Ben McNeil has a good chapter in his book about, I think it's Saudi Arabia, you know, 50 years from now, Saudi Arabia, who's clung to the old technologies of oil, is, is you know, he's sort of moots the proposition that it invades, I think it's Oman or somewhere, which has totally embraced the green technology. And, you know, it's fascinating, you know, you know in terms of that sort of embracing our, our intellect and various things like that. We were over in Adelaide, uh, and there's a bus in Adelaide that's powered solely by the sun. It's got its own solar array system. Um, all of the energy it sort of generates, uh, it uses that totally renewable energy. It's electric, it's silent, it glides up to you. Yeah. Where was it built? <laughs> Rolleston. No, yes. really? Yeah, wow, cutting edge technology. There's only about three of the, three of them in the world. I think there's one. Uh, it might be more. There's one in Adelaide, a couple in New York, and then uh, we happened to mention that we're going to Mazda City over in Dubai, which is a futuristic sort of enviro city. And they went. We sold some buses to them. They pimped them up. They've got uh, uh, apparently wood paneling and uh, lazy boy seats in these buses, electric buses that they drive around. <laughs> okay. For all the way from sunny old Rolleston to the most most futuristic city in the world. Well, hey, uh, Rolleston, town of the future. What, is that what they say? That's what they say. Well, they are correct. Yeah. yeah well, it was a design line, you know, and Good they on just them. get on quietly doing their little thing. Yeah. Wonderful bus. And it makes you think, you know, you, you've been into town recently, seen the buses, the noisy, oh. belching buses. And the, the diesel out the back of them. Ah. Well, I tell you, this thing just glides up silently, whispering death in the form of a bus. So is it quite different? Because in, in um, central Auckland, you've got the Link bus, and I think in Christchurch, you've also got sort of the equivalent as well. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're partially electric. So, uh, so you know, you know, they're quite silent, and when you're on them, they sort of they sort of hum along. Isn't it marvellous? But uh, is. Uh, are they developing something quite different? Yes, they're looking at sort of full electric. Obviously, right. you need a, a certain amount of power. And what they've done, because they, Adelaide's... Adelaide is... I was, uh, I'd only been to Adelaide for two hours before, and I'd sworn never to, to go back again. Wonderful city, though, I've mm. discovered. Um, and, and unlike New Zealand, uh, Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne, managed to maintain a lot of their heritage buildings. Um, yeah. But you're also, at the same time, looking forward. So they're, they're big on this kind of thing. They've got... You know, because Australia's got, uh, I think, a very, very small amount of renewable resources in terms of their energy. Lots of coal. Love it. Can't get enough. Um, so, yeah, they've got this wonderful sort of thing where they've built these big solar arrays on the roof of various buildings. And it's, um, during the day, they could have generated quite a lot of electricity. And then when they go to charge the bus up, they sort of... And then what they don't use goes back into the grid. So they, they offset that. So very, well, very clever. Well, I, I, I think we've had an extremely positive and um, inspiring... Um, a conversation about all this um, great innovation. So I'm very loath to um, take it down with stuff about why Tangy Day. Well, you know, there, there's a, there is a wonderful no. sort of synthesis between the two. You know, all of these kind of people with great ideas and visions getting out there and doing it, and then we get sort of dragged back to this ongoing discussion about the, the nature and role of why Tangy Day. What, what did you do for your why Tangy Day? I uh, uh, slept in a little bit. Oh, I, I bottled some beer. It doesn't get any more Kiwi than that. No, it doesn't. Does and and, and uh, went out and bought a strimmer. A uh, you know, a, a, a weed eater. In, 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 so in kiwiness. I can smell it. And talk to the edges of of the lawn, you know. Oh, there's. <laughs> uh, is that a South Island word, strimmer? Uh, maybe it is. Yeah. You take your strimmer to your crib. Because I'm pretty sure when I grew up, it was a weed eater. Yeah, weed I eater, call it a weed eater. Yeah. And um, but it's, lately, it's become a strimmer. I don't like it. No, I fear it. Yes, no, it's very kiwi, and you know, it's, it's it, it is. Why don't we, you know? We've got this kind of thing where we have to. You know, I think John Key was heckled as he went to uh, to Waitangi, and there was all the sort of the normal hoo-ha up there. And I was always a big fan of of uh, Prime Minister Helen not uh, not actually going there and, and travelling around to various other places yeah. because it is a national mm. day. And she said, "What's the point of going there? It's just going to create the same old normal things." And uh, you know, a lot of people went, "Oh, you have to go. You've got to address it." Well, no, you don't. No. Um, so nonetheless, it's the normal sort of things. Because in the end, it all became about um, Hone Hardaweta and the Maori Party. Exactly. Yes. And all their infighting, which is absolutely totally irrelevant to 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 our daily yeah. lives. What we what we do is irrelevant to policy, irrelevant to everything. Yep. But that's exactly what everyone wanted yeah. to concentrate Instead on. Of some kind of a national day of celebration. Yeah. Or well, I don't think we have enough of those. I was talking to someone yesterday, the day before, and they they just I think they'd been to Rwanda. Um, and they said, incredibly clean country. You know, they'd gone through this terrible genocide mm. and whatnot. But a as a country, I think the 28th of every month, this is what they were saying, the whole country knocks off and everyone goes out and cleans up. No one works apart from, like, the rubbish truck drivers. Mm. So once a month, and, and he said there's no rubbish bins because everyone takes their rubbish home with them. 
you know, wow. what, a, a sort of a national days of celebration. We lack those in New Zealand. Imagine if someone mooted that. You know, maybe Waitangi Day, we, to, to re-embrace this, we could have days of, of, of celebration, days of ideas, days of, yeah, of yeah. community activism or, or actions. You know, people going out and going, let's go and clean a beach or do a thing or, or celebrate our New Zealanders. And at the end, we... we Drink some of the beer we've bottled and have a barbecue, and we listen to the gentle sound of Wemo's strimmer in the distance as he tidies up a grass verge in a <laughs> neglected cemetery. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dear Radar. We'll speak again next week. See ya.